We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. Uh, good morning. Welcome to Stock Talk. Uh, it's a real pleasure seeing everyone here. Uh, we like to keep up to date on, on current important news, not only in regard to the energy transition that's going on and the key companies that are helping to drive that forward, but also like supply chain issues and just things that are affecting the overall market. And let's just say there's been a lot of big news lately, and it ties into some news from last year as well. But Austin, kind of lead us on what's what's going on out there right now. Yeah, we wanted to kind of focus this conversation around infrastructure, and and for anyone that that has been paying attention, what what I'm going to lead with, and I know you're gonna you're gonna have some other stuff that we're gonna look at as well, but what I'm gonna lead with here is the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Uh, now, for those of you that that have been following along, about a hundred train cars came flying off the tracks, uh, massive uh, chemical spill, incredible amount of damage done. Uh, to that town of roughly about 5,000 people that's just just almost on the border between Ohio and Pennsylvania. Um, and and kind of the fallout from that, looking at, you know, what what kind of was it that caused this? Is this something that happens regularly? What's the biggest issues with this? And, and kind of but looking at the whole thing overall. So we wanted to dive into that. And then I know you wanted to dive into some uh, some food processing plants and, and things like that that have also had some infrastructural issues over the last year or so. So something that we're, we're paying very close attention to. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, they're all tied together. Uh, and we'll try to avoid all the conspiracy stuff. It's hard not to have conspiracy theories, but we're not saying there's anything definitive. We just want to talk about what's happening. And there's lots of reasons and possibilities for them to occur. But this, for this train derailment, which is not uncommon to have train derailments. Now it is of this magnitude, uh, it's the it's the caustic and chemical uh, spill that's occurred that is is terrible. A because it's it's very hazardous, and very harmful, uh, and we'll see how that turns out. But um, what's more interesting is there's a very big reluctance for mainstream news to even want to talk about it, and it's too big a story to not bother to pay attention. And it doesn't have to be political; it just it's factual. There's a huge rain. It was a massive explosion. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I so I think it's not surprising to people that it's not getting the attention that it deserves. And I think, you know, part of that, you know, it, we, I'm going to try to keep politics out of this as much as I can. But let's look at, at, at who's in charge of the transportation sec, uh, section. Let's look at who's in, in the presidency right now. I think that's part of the reason why it's not getting the exact coverage it should be getting. But like you said, train derailments aren't actually that uncommon. In the United States, they average about a thousand of them a year. They average about, you know, between 15 and 1600 train accidents a year. And about a thousand of those each year are derailments themselves. Now, that could be something as simple as the last car on a train tips off as you're coming around a corner. So you got to be a little bit careful with those numbers. They're all clearly not hundred car massive explosions like we're seeing in Ohio right now, but it's not incredibly uncommon. And, and this is a, an issue that's gone. I mean, I've got data just back to 2019, but you can go further than that. And the numbers actually get higher. So this is, this is something that needs to be addressed, has needed to be addressed in the U S we've talked about the, the need for rebuilding a lot of their critical infrastructure already. Yeah. So it, it, I mean, that's, I think the root of the problem comes from there. And then obviously the the bigger issue off the back of this is a decision that was basically made to get this dealt with as quickly as possible by burning off uh, massive, massive amounts of chemicals, which have now contaminated the air and contaminated the water supply, not just in Ohio, but that's going to have downstream effects. If you you know kind of see the way the rivers work through the, uh, the, the continental U.S., that's going to have downstream effects that could go all the way down to Texas. Uh, yeah. And all the uh, like, you know, it could stretch halfway across the country. So it was a move that was made to get the railway back open as quickly as possible. And I think the fallout from it is going to be it, it could be very catastrophic. It had some serious environmental and and just overall on the, the general population impacts. And there was also another one uh, a couple days later as well. Right. There, there was the two Smaller, uh, yeah. kind of within the subsequent days. Yeah, there was one in, in Houston, Texas, and a third one in, in Arizona, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, there, there has been two more since this happened. So uh, just kind of, again, highlighting that this is something that needs to be addressed on a, on a massive scale. And to not cover it uh, for whatever reason, the mainstream news. I mean, even uh, 
the transportation uh, Pete Buttigieg came out, when it happened, he didn't mention it at all. Uh, yeah. And it was a couple of days after Saul hadn't want, didn't want to talk about it. And it isn't small. It's a big deal. What's also interesting with that is that this is a progressive uh, climate alarmist administration. They're all they, yeah. they're into that. Not only have they ignored the Nord Stream climate, or sorry, uh, environmental disaster, which is the yeah. largest environmental disaster of all time. It's a it's yeah. it's, it's horrendous. There's you know David Suzuki's not on TV talking about it. No one's yeah. out there you know you know screaming bloody murder like they did with the BP one down uh, off the coast of Texas, which uh, it's considerably worse than. It's, it's like considerably sure. worse. Yeah. Uh, so, which people should be asking questions. Why is that? Why why aren't why aren't environmentalists care about it? Why why isn't it the news care about it? Why isn't it a big story? Well, because there's other things going on, um, and it's hard not to get uh, divided and conspiratorial whenever you have things like that. When the those that are supposed to be just providing you with information are choosing to disregard ones that you don't uh, they don't like or don't think are newsworthy, uh, and that I, with the level of damage that these this derailment has had is troubling. Now, I've talked to people before in the past, and listen, we, we, we transport dangerous chemicals on rail all the time. And yeah, a, de a rail a de a derailment can happen. So that in and of itself isn't, isn't that, uh, it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, we saw yeah. in Quebec, Austin, like bring that, that one up a couple of years back now, or maybe it's even five years ago now. It, it's horrible. actually, th this was, sh was shocking to me. It's been 10 years. Oh, since 10 that. years. Oh my goodness. That's, it's yeah. been 10 years since the uh, Lac Magnatic. Uh, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but uh, since that derailment, and it actually resulted in the, in the deaths of 47 people when yes. uh, a number of uh, petroleum cars derailed at, at about one o'clock in the morning in a, in a town in Quebec just massive damage so th th this isn't something new and, and what i'll say as well is in, for important context we're recording this on wednesday the show's going to come out on friday so there will probably have been some more details and stuff yes. i'll have an update friday today when everyone's listening to this uh on our on our website blog post area just kind of recapping what's happened in the couple days since but i mean it's it's a massive amount of damage when you look at the 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 just the fallout from the that one in quebec there continues to be trail train derailments in Canada as well. The the standards and we're almost ten years to the day actually removed from that. Uh, it, it's it's still an issue that needs to be addressed, and and, and an overhaul of the entire infrastructure surrounding uh, railways needs to be looked at and, and needs to be uh, dealt with going forward. Yeah, and and we're not making the claim that no one in the mainstream news is covering it. That's what like the hmm. bots uh, on the left will, will say is that they'll post an article on page 51 of some New York post or something. It's that it's not getting the airplay that we all remember that massive explosion in Canada from that, that derailment. It was horrific. Hmm. And it highlights, you know, a, a, a black swan or a very rare event. That's just hmm. horrifying and horrible. This is of the same magnitude and it's an environmental disaster. Uh, we don't know how long, uh, they're going to do a lot of, you know, kind of uh, work on this site to see how it's going to affect the environment. Like, and I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Will the whole town be just moratorium? It's done, yeah. entirely displaced. I don't know, but it is that level of a story. Um, and I don't want to get too much into that. But what's interesting is that it does highlight, and, and we won't spend too much time on this. The food processing we talked about it last year. Mm -hmm. uh, a string of food processing plants that were constantly. And, the, and still to date, they still go on. Uh, egg yeah. processing plants, culling of, of birds, uh, eggs. There's a meme on Wall Street bets with eggs being gold, basically, because the, the price <laughs> of eggs have like, you know, gone up 500% in some places in the States. Um, yeah. It was very unusual, the level of food processing uh, fires and destruction that was happening. And I remember yeah. we went through it because I thought, oh, this seems awfully high. And whenever I looked into the numbers that the, the fire report, and I mean, let me just first by starting here, uh, you know, right from the magazine of National Fire Protection Association, they came out with an article saying recent fires at food processing facilities have some claiming there's more going on than meets the eye. Uh, experts aren't convinced and they've entitled it nothing to see here. So yeah. once again, when you looked at the numbers and, and we can provide that to, to people, I, I'm just going to pull them up quickly here. Um, 
So from the 2018 numbers from the Fire Association, uh, and, and this is what fact checkers have pointed out, is that there was um, 38,000, roughly 38,000 fires in structures. So industrial kind of fires. And you think, holy smokes, that's that's enormous. Then yeah, yeah. Th there, it isn't a lot of these food processing plants. Well, you quickly narrow that down to 7,000 that are actually happen to the structure. All those right. other ones were either waste bins or a car fire or some sort yeah. of like very minor. Uh, so yeah. when you someone, someone the numbers, in the company kitchen, like yes. a pan or a, a pan catches on fire, something like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, much smaller amounts as to what that actually came to be about. Uh, so that was a bit more interesting. And it's like this with, with the derailments is that unless you start to look and see exactly how many of this size of derailments, I don't think there's that many, uh, yeah. but in any event, what we can take away from it is it's it's interesting that that's happening on top of the attacks on the U.S. power grid. So yeah. even Bloomberg, attacks on U.S. power grids rose to all-time high in 2022. And we're not talking just about cyber attacks, which, believe me, you're going to hear a lot more about that in the next year. We're talking yeah. physical threats. Uh, and you once again, you have to go search this out online to try to find because they just aren't reporting it. Um, yeah. What they are reporting, which is interesting, uh, is these objects in the sky. All of a sudden these balloons and these objects, you know, kind of hinting at, you know, UFOs and all sorts of nonsense. Uh, yeah. And you think, what's that all about? I mean, that's that's an interesting kind of correlation that there's that this is happening at this point in time too. Like, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it's it's very troubling that that there seems to be this all of a sudden. I mean, if you, if you listen to kind of the the briefing that the uh, the U.S. National Security Agencies gave yesterday, they sort of said and by yesterday I mean Tuesday this week. By the way, uh, just again to preface that for people, uh, they essentially saying like, look, you know these these balloons. This isn't the first time we've seen these kind of devices in the air, and you know the Pentagon's been tracking this sort of stuff for years, but we're now only starting to shoot them down is is what's you know kind of concerning to me about that and then uh, the fact that at least again today wednesday we haven't found any of the debris from these aside from the first chinese spy balloon which was shot down over south carolina they haven't found anything in alaska they haven't found anything in the yukon they haven't found anything in lake huron so uh, you know it's again what what really is the story here i'm not 100 percent sure is it something that we should be paying attention to yes is it something that maybe is getting more attention to perhaps deflect from other things i think that's highly possible yes no and it's and it's good to to let that there's lots of people you go look at edward snowden on twitter uh there's mm -hmm. lots of youtube channels that they get into what this could mean we're just we're just going to hold out and wait to see what the data comes out with but you know as far as some of these egg stories and poultry as well uh like avian flu has hammered 40 million egg laying hens have been culled in the u.s alone uh this yeah. year uh last year was also uh a record amount of uh, poultry destruction as well. So when you look at all these things, you think, what is going on? Like with all of these infrastructure issues, with all of these things that are happening kind of all at the same time. Um, now, with ones that are happening literally to date, what's interesting is that there's two very, well, there's three stories that are coming out right now. Yeah. One is the Epstein list. That's coming out soon. Now, not the entire yeah. list. But that's coming yeah. out very soon. So they need a distraction for that. You've got the constant Hunter Biden laptop stuff, which we don't want to talk about. We leave it alone. It's pretty awful. It's pretty terrible. We leave other people to talk about that. Uh, that's enough on that one. But you also have Seymour Hirsch, who's the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, uh, has made a very compelling argument that the U.S. were the ones who blew up Nord Stream 2. So yeah. that is arguably the biggest reason and distraction from like, don't look at here, look at all, look yeah. at these space objects and the, and the aliens that are coming. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I would even say like t taking it all back full circle is this, this train derailment as well uh, is going to be a considered a massive failure in the way that it's been handled. The ec they're not the economics or the economic fallout is going to be bad, but the environmental fallout is going to be terrible. I listened to a, an interview this morning, actually, of a woman who's got a, a farm about 15 miles away from where the derailment happened. All her chickens at, on her farm dropped dead yeah. from the chemical burnoff. There's hundreds and hundreds of fish 
it showing up dead in, in Ohio rivers. And I'll give a lot of credit to people on the ground in Ohio, just your average kind of citizen getting these videos out onto Twitter or out onto, onto TikTok or YouTube or whatever they're using to kind of highlight that and say, look, this is, this is, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an intentional not covering of it because the, the way it's been handled, it was, is going to end up being an absolute catastrophe. And there's probably going to, it's probably going to come out that there would have been a more probably costly and long-term way to deal with this properly. And they maybe cut some corners, did what was going to be the fastest way to get this dealt with and get things back up and running. And the, and the cost could be immense for that. Yeah. And I know, cause I mean, I've taken some PR courses and, and what they always say is as uncomfortable as it is, when something happens, you get out right in front with it, right yeah. in front. Uh, that's your only chance uh, and not doing it, like giving it a couple days to let it breathe is the very worst because yeah. even giving it half a day lets the conspiratorial world get a handle of things. Um, and, and it's hard to con control. I don't even mean control messaging in a, in a propaganda way, but just control any belief. So they've yeah. dug themselves into a bit of a corner here with it. And unfortunately, you have news streams coming out from like Russia and China saying this is the U.S. Chernobyl. That's what they're equating it to. So yeah. the rest of those, if you want to find like what's happening, you have to go look at Chinese sites to see the actual video, which is also yeah. interesting because how do they have video <laughs> of yeah. this? Uh, so there's just a lot of things that are just very curious, very strange, very weird that are happening. Uh, and uh, why does it matter? And, and like, once again, you know, because today more than ever, uh, politics actually is influencing the markets. It, it not only is influencing, it will have a direct and long-term effect if you allow some of the policies that, say, a, a UN, a WEF, a progressive uh, type, if you allow that to happen, uh, your ingenuity, your high tech, there's going to be some serious consequences with the experiment towards you know, extreme left economic ideology. It never works. There's a reason for it. All throughout history, it's never worked. Um, but once again, usually I don't, we don't need to talk about politics, except that we're in such massive ideological differences today that are hard yeah. to even believe in my brain uh, that they're going on, that it is affecting the markets and, yeah. uh, you know, the markets are, are acting appropriately. Yeah, and that that's going to continue to be the case until there's there's more stability on that front. But but like we said, we wanted to to really kind of highlight the story and give it some some kind of coverage that it hasn't really been getting, uh, as well as you know tying it all into infrastructure and saying there there are massive needs to overhaul the infrastructure across North America, and yeah. that ties into a lot of what we talk about. A lot of the companies we cover are making moves to help meet some of these goals and challenges, and we'd like to continue to see investment in that. And I think this is another another one that highlights it. You know, if if you're telling me that that there should be a thousand train derailments in the U.S. in a year, I'd say we the the transportation railroad transportation needs to be overhauled. Yeah. Uh, and looked at very seriously because although that doesn't amount to a high number of fatalities, it's only a matter of time before another giant chemical spill like this happens yes. and uh, affects it. Or, you know, there's a massive derailment in another town that, where you have the tragedy like you did in Quebec 10 years ago. So it needs to be looked at seriously. It needs to be taken seriously. And uh, and, and hopefully it, it will be going forward. And I mean, it, to turn this you know to a positive is once again, like you're saying with infrastructure is everyone kind of knows there's a massive overhaul of infrastructure needed in the US and they've got some money earmarked for it. And I'm not necessarily saying, uh, and I haven't, I haven't looked that let's go spend more, but you could have electric trains. You could have hydrogen run. There's technology that you could have very high speed trains like they have in Europe or have in Japan uh, that could connect cities probably a lot more eff effectively and efficiently. Now, those are major, major undertakings, but if you want to spur growth and you want to bring back some manufacturing to home, which they do and which they're starting, and you want to leapfrog it with a lot of the new energy they're developing, this is a huge opportunity uh, to, to revamp infrastructure and to, to get it up to speed and also put back people to work uh, on, a, on a major scale. Yeah, it, I, I, I couldn't have said it better. That's, it's an it's a incredible opportunity, and I would love to see it, it kind of tackled in, in such as it based as a, as a great opportunity and a great way to galvanize a workforce and, and really channel some investment in the right areas. Yeah, and, I, and that's, I guess, the end is, is kind of like you're saying is, is I hope that 
from all the ugliness and the politics that will get played on both sides off of it is that there'll be a common ground of saying, listen, we could all agree we need to get this type of stuff sorted out, have mm -hmm. uh, our infrastructure upgraded appropriately, and then both parties could come together in the middle to kind of galvanize and go, we have an opportunity to reshape what uh, the entire infrastructure that runs all the way up to Canada and down to Mexico and to do it in, in a way that is environmentally sound and also future thinking. And I think that's yeah. where if we could find some middle ground and leave the politics aside, and, you know, there's going to be some reality that, that has to be dealt with. Um, that's what people looking at 2024 should be kind of eyeballing. It is. And you know what? I'm going to just leave you with this number. I just pulled it up here. This is from the Japanese Transportation Safety Board. Uh, any guess on how many train derailments they had in Japan last year? Oh, goodness. No, I, I have no idea. 14. Wow. All right. So well, there, there we go. There. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with that number. But there, there's a way to get this uh, going in the, in the right direction. I just, that's just one example. But uh, very interesting number there. Excellent. Well, everyone, just we wanted to have a, a bit of a different take, but it all kind of comes together. Um, and uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll chat to you next week.